So we are actually uh, we are creating the cost name, right? So one one cost we are creating as user transportation. Another cost we can create as new cost. And that's why the third is just the certification can be included.
So now just what exactly is the resource cost? Resource cost are made up of infrastructure, facility, location, equipment and material. Infrastructure are located within the learning section and other resources are located within the residential section. So this is the cost of that. Here we are using facilities, location, equipment and material. So we would have already created all of this. We should only create a cost for that. If there is a need, only all the things coming to picture only if they say that we need cost also to be implemented in the system, we need hammers also. And we have to be more super as we support the only time we will be implementing hammers, otherwise we will not be implemented. So that was the use cost, which was related to this one cost. Now, what is additional cost? Additional cost, here if you see they have even given the screen shot, under learning, we have now two items. Selected our item, then from the related area, down the base cost, and then this is how the screen will look like. So here we have to always select our current screen. Additional cost for resources. No, not just exactly additional cost. If there are other costs that we want to track, this part. A you can add additional costs. The first step in this process is to create an input group called a task group. So this task group, which we have seen earlier, we can use this for user and travel and all that. So a task group is created under reference to travel and task group. There is a reference that so this is under physical resources. We are including this in anti physical resources. We will be adding all of these. Say, equipment, location, facility, material, and all. If you navigate to restaurant, uh, I mean, uh, restaurant search and commerce, then you put a cost name. So here you can create a cost name. So that cost name can be for a user or for an instructor, etc. Cost name might be created for things such as instructor, transportation, hotel, news, or travel. So each cost will created and again will specify the entity. There are four entities there, in fact the user location. So when we create a cost then we have to match for this cost actually with this new cost. If the cost name does not have an entity selection, it will not be away. it will not be available options as well as the having additional cost to the resource cost. When we create a cost name, you have to conclude that we are adding that to this entity. For a general cost value, we need a cost name called instructor travel. See, instructor himself is traveling from some place and coming, coming to buy to get the cost goal and make, make it available for instructor records. This way you can track how much you spend on instructor travel or even the deliver a training. So there are two costs here in, in, in turn here. One is instructor himself is traveling and also what is the cost to take the training. Now, for specific cost tracking, create a cost name for each cost. That is, instructor airfare and instructor hotel, instructor meal and instructor training program. So, this way you can track how much is spent on each specific of instructor travel to deliver. Now, for as you do, for instance, that is for instance, that is cost, you have to create a cost name. It can be used to create an additional cost for a report. Additional cost can always be overridden as a payroll costing level. See, what we have seen earlier is uh, even if there is an additional cost for a location or a facility, instead of being creating earlier and using it as fixed, when we are actually mapping to a segment or a schedule document, it is always overridden. We can always modify it. So both Based on additional cost, if you want to test one amount for the entire schedule document, then use the unit of measure C in plan and fill the value of the schedule document. If you create a cost name to be used with a, with a user record, these will display during the learning given recording process if you push to record learning by adding financial option and values can be entered at that time. You see the figure for what you have given. What we say is this unit of measure, we have to leave it fine if we want to just give a fixed amount term without creating any cost name for anything. We just want to make it simple. We just say this cost, this particular training is acting so much as mentioned the amount here and we just make some measure plan and this is currency. Currency is matching. Just extra cost and this is it. Yeah. 
ಮಾಡಿ ಅಡಿಷನಲ್ ಕಾಸ್ಟ್ I 
and the next is the question and the question is what? The question is what? The question is what? I 
head, right? Uh, not connectors. So just for a gap, so it is API. But then, uh, it is not only related to that, no? it is as fast as human in this one, right? Entirely related to the fact that there is not any notification. No, no. Connectors is we are we use only for Excel. We don't uh, uh, use uh, connectors for one system to other system. We use the uh, uh, API integration uh, this system, uh, right? Yeah. Huh. So, so we need integration to move to other system. want to add cost to our location, send from references, physical resources, and so whether it is a facility or for a location, you can just directly go to the internet and add the cost to the internet. So for each and every location and structure, they have been cost. Now this particular uh, as it is, so we create a schedule that thing, we will be saying uh, uh, this schedule that thing is happening in terms of location, this is the instructor, this is the instrument, so we actually assign them. So when we assign all these to, uh, when we assign the resources to a segment, automatically the cost also will come into the and this is how it is shown in the system. We didn't use that, they didn't like this happen. So here we have a uh, segment. Now whatever resources that we have added with all the amounts, so that particular amount is coming under cash summary for each and every resource. So when they go here, they didn't use cost at all. They didn't want to use cost for all these. Whatever we are doing, we need to use. They are doing all that kind. Can we consider that element in this costing and this costing? Yeah, that is what this combo is about. So it's not mandated that we need to go with the combo. No, they will be aware whether they want to implement the combo or not. So, example, the current uh, legacy system of the user, they are using this combo. Uh, how do we go ahead with uh, the perspective of that? Is it mandated that we have to do it? See, currently, uh, in the SAP, they are using a type of commas. So, yeah, migrated to such a type of using this type of commas. So, and, uh, like, they don't have any commas. We do have commas, but we have commas. Some things are going around there. Is there any way that it can help us any third party? Or, like, uh, is it possible that I have to go with commas? No, that's it. That's why you the client will take to call the client. We have to, uh, when the discussions are happening in the beginning of the phase, then actually the phase is most correct about all this. They will speak about the first answer. And they will also speak that if you learn status to be implemented in LMS, then we have a phase with us. We need to have integration also with the FI. Then if they say that they will be giving more integration there, you might say that they do not want integration at all. It again depends on companies may not be doing integration. So then there is no uh, then there is no use that we have to So integration is just needed. So that's how clients will take a call whether to use or not. Yeah, whether it's a scanner, they need or whatever. Okay. 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 In the initial phase itself, integration consultant, any consultant, regular consultant, they will be having uh, the way we are having workshops or other models. So, let me even integration consultants and have a workshop with them to, uh, to know what systems we have and what systems we have and what systems we have and what systems we have. So, everything else is going to be taken care of. So, now after all our go live is done, then this integration go live also will happen after the video. So, it's all 
and this is a profit center among the users. So, the same account code, v 021 c code, is an account for which the user is also having the same account code, and as well as the organization department or an IT department, who is actually sponsoring that will also have the same account code. So, here the profit center is uh, this particular account code. It all depends on the account code that they are actually creating. So the account code, this particular account code is different from this account code, but there are three organizations who are actually sponsoring them. That account code is also the same. So they are just giving an example that it can be the same in the future, not necessary that they both should be different and one should be receiving the end and one should be at the uh, uh, spending price. In case, they say that feasibility is there where they both also can be the same. Not necessary that one, an account code should not be into a uh, call center if that is also a profit center. Okay. There is only one department the LNA department. Now, that department itself is going to spend for the training and also receive it from the same department. But there can be uh, different... Uh, uh, sections might be, or different divisions within them. But then at the end, it is only one whole department, so they can have the same account code. Rarely, uh, it, it, it can be a project, or it can be an org unit of the department, say that I, I will be bearing my employees over are there under the SR or under SR, so I will be bearing the cost, and it should not be, it should be from my budget, and it should not be from the company budget. So, it all depends on how they want to treat that budget. If they say company is only going to sponsor, then it will be from the department, the learning department itself, and not from the uh, own uh, department budget. It will not be considered from that budget, it will be considered from the, and the whole company budget, which is the learning department budget. So, uh, as a gist, I just wanted to understand. So, uh, is only the plan code will be only the one which we need to look after or is that like, you know, a cost that requires any so we are creating a time for we are creating a cost means for that and we are having a cost center and profit center. We are all having all these. So, ultimately, I would be using only, uh, I would say that, I would say that, the terminology is right. So, you only wanted to use only one thing, that could be uh, my account uh, code. Hmm. So, I, I would say that, see, as you have said, like, account code is having a cost center, cost name, uh, right? In, in the beginning, we have to so, uh, the explanation that we have given us is we are creating a um, cost. So, it can be a user, it can be an item, it can be an instructor, or it can be a resource. So, all for all these four entities, you have to create an account for each other. If you are creating a cost for travel, for food, you are creating a cost for And we are telling you that cost is related to this cost center. See, uh, now I agree what you're saying. Normally what we say is that the budget incurred or budget, uh, you know, uh, for any of the organization or a department, we generally say in finance as well, a cost center. From this cost center, the budget has been, uh, you know, shared or, uh, you know, it has been distributed or it has been incurred, any, any of the terminology. But when it comes to success factors, LMS, I see a cost center, I see a profit center, I see a cost center, I see a cost center. But I just wanted to know that like, ultimately from, uh, like, you know, only one should be the criteria. I don't, I don't want to say that from this it has been gone and it has been distributed. I don't want to say that. Can I say something to that from, based on the account code, the complete learning is being dependent like commerce learning? That is become item cost, not account code. An entire item cost will be your cost for that learning. Item cost is there, right? 
there is something called item size. So your whatever size that you are uh, adding to it can be, I mean, whatever, whatever cost mean it is, whatever base cost or so there are two different cost base cost and additional cost. At the end of the day, all your base cost and additional cost you are going to include in your item. So it will give us your picture on the entire cost that is involved for an item. So I can also extract the input in the item cost. Yeah, you can. 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 Yeah, you can.
करना है Main, 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 main
means can and we can have it. So we will be assigning that to a user that is right. Because we are assigning that happy to a user, so we can directly navigate to user chat and then we go to tool and select login to the editor. If we use it, select in the other thing, this is already there in the system. You can always have a scan copy and if you see here, there is something called file as well. So the scan copy that you have uploaded in the system and put it in your desktop, you can browse that and attach it here and you can give your own comments or you can tell what you documented all of everything before the description. And so that that will be attached in this particular description. And then you can even, uh, so this, this document will be again marked to your user. So in this learning system, the hard copy, whatever you have written in that exam, it can be a paperwork so that will be uh, that even you will be able to do it. That's why just long in the event editor only at one will have your organization to do it. So it all depends on the whatever exam or uh, that you have taken uh, He is to be able to do it. Only that he will see to it. He's like. It's just basically how to cancel a schedule of action. So, go to schedule of action, call schedule of action, and then click on cancel, and then it will be asked. Your implementation time, any time if you face any issue, if you are uh, like going through the documents or you are not able to find the document, wherever you are, when you are under farmer or the financial transaction, I think you can go and select this help button so that the documents will be open. Now what exactly is just pricing and uh, fusion? Fusion is again pricing. Every item or a schedule document can be assigned a default price. Say this uh, item is having the cash. So it will have a default at least cash or a currency or a fusion. Fusion is nothing but a price. So remember if they all they ask you what it was it meant by fusion is a cash price, you have to select as price. But nothing related to China question will come because China is not covered in the limit at all. It is a separate it is a separate fusion as a separate form. Different price currency. Now again they are speaking of currency that it should mean based on the currency that you are actually going to create. Now, different size combinations can be assigned to an item or schedule of item based on the catalog to which the item actually belongs to. So, there is a hierarchy in the LMS term pricing. At least the level of the hierarchy, the price is inherited from the parent itself. So, there is an item which is again available in a catalog. There is a schedule of item which is available in item and that item is in a catalog. So, this way it is available in master inventory and from there, it is having a features available in a catalog. So it all depends on the parent. Where from there, it is happening is inherited. We were asking if they have given the stock. Okay, I already told what that we do mean. What we think for it. And I think that we will be able to do it. 
ఇంకా స్మార్ట్ ఫోన్ ఏంటంటే కంటిన్యూ కాల్ ఐటమ్స్ అని చెప్పడం వాళ్ళు చేస్తాం 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 దాన్ని చూసుకుంటారు చెప్పడం వాళ్ళు నా ఐటమ్ రకమైన ప్రైస్ అని చెప్పి ఐటమ్ అలా అది గురించి యాడ్జెస్ట్ అయిన ఐటమ్ లేదా మీ నావిగేట్ చేసే వాళ్ళ ఐటమ్ యాడ్ మీ నావిగేట్ దిస్కి హారి కట్టే సర్చ్లీ కాని The default price and the price currency that is applied to the item and it is added to the platform. An item can have multiple price currency combination and you will see the price in the preferred currency if available. So, it's safe under price. So, normal items. this particular price is still the entire price for this particular item. So, this is again a new one to use. And this is under this currency and what is the price. So, if we navigate to item and then if we go to pricing, we will know whether this item uh, includes cost or not. That is where we are telling directly that whether it is not a base cost, it is not an additional cost, directly say that this is the uh, cost for an item. That's it. So, once you link in, give there any 500 or any, any amount, whatever we give, that will be automatically something that the price is there. The amount will show. Okay, fine. So, it again depends whether we are giving for pricing directly or we are maintaining for each and every cost based for additional cost. So, it will define the entire cost as well. Making the item available for purchase. Once you have set a default price for an item under this pricing, then you must configure how to charge users. The first factor is learning records, debits and credits, but no actual cash changes have made with the account. So, in order to charge users, the account for the profit must be used. So, here, the uh, people who are asking, in order, to, in order to charge users, the account post must be used. This transaction is called a charge back. When an account post receives a credit, it is reported to as a profit center. I guess, similarly, when it is debited, it is as a cost center. Setting up the purchasing option. Here we have So now how is how this charge back is actually done under profit center if we navigate here, if there is a charge for profit center. So under profit center the purchasing option, no charge, charge to buyers, charge to buyers, specified account code and distribute this charges to a specific account code. So for each and every account for user we are going to create an account code. So based on the account code you will be selecting the brand down from the purchasing option, charge to buyers. Authorized accounts, or for specific accounts, you 
and then as a such, distribute to that account board. See, there is an item which is costing uh, 10,000 and uh, for each and every uh, user instead of charging that information, that is if they want to charge for all users and one shot, that also can be done. So that is what they meant to say by distribute charges to this specific account board. So whatever fees that they have chose the draw time, that is your what is meant by no charge, charge to buy your franchise account code, charge to buy your specific specified account code and distribute this charges to the account group. That field is a little field description they have given here. Found and uh, making an item available to users, so it's the same way uh, as we assign from the catalog, either to offer them from the item, so the item is going to be given to the user. Now, the next one is the translation policy. That was there first of all. All of the same features. A cancellation policy can be applied to an item in the master registry. So you can create as many policies as you need, but only one policy can be applied to a single item. So if there is trust involved and if the terms should be cancelled and we have to create a cancellation policy, then it should be always for a single item, the cancellation policy should be configured. Now, the policy contains a set of rules that dictates how users should be charged. So, translation policy is actually created here in the reference formal translation policy. This is where they create a translation policy. Now, here the rules for the translation policy is again so, delivery offset days before, how many days before, or after the first day of the scheduled offset. This is created. What is the rule type? And no charge, charge full price. If there is a cancellation, then happening. Should, should it be charged? Or if they say, like, tomorrow there is a court and today they really want to cancel it, should they, should they be charged full price or should they be charged based on percentage or there is a fixed amount? And how many days before they can cancel it? So these are all the rules that they have given. So there must be one actor scheduled as in the master inventory in a apply a cancellation policy. So there should be definitely an item if we want to have a cancellation policy master than item. So under references panel cancellation policy. If you want to see the cancellation policy there, cancellation policy. Seventy-two hours, so we can name it how many, whatever description that we want to, say if it is from external customer, there is a translation point to 72 hours before even we can cancel it, so we can put the same description here. If you see, they have created some 50% free time, so let's just, if you see, they have created an ID from 72 and 52 hours, they have given a description, and, um, coming to the list. So the rule says they don't want to charge for the cancellation policy and since then they have not charged so no other radio buttons are selected or any percentage or amount that's being given here. And how many days grace period and there is a grace period for the cancellation policy. So they have not given anything there. So here what they have said is that is select no charge radio button and enter the date the same screen that we have seen. If I go on to the screen, I'm going to go on to the screen. Okay, okay, thank you. I'm not. Translation policy. So you are not selecting any item particularly. 
ಇನ್ನು ಸ್ಕೀಮ್ ಯು ಆರ್ ನಾಟ್ ಸೆಲೆಕ್ಟಿಂಗ್ ಎನಿ ಐಟಮ್ ಪರ್ಟಿಕ್ಯುಲರ್ ಐಟಮ್ So, we have to tell the translation, what is translation for? So, how are you? So, how are you connecting with Aitana? See, what? I didn't hear you. How do we connect with Aitana? Yeah, we'll see that.
cleansing has been set at no practical so only thinking after the document is like you know taking too much of the Uh, my name is just show us a translation policy and we just kind of uh, we just continue this translation policy and we will wind up. Then we get the translation policy package order and they were actually seeing how this pricing this match to the backlog. And how once it is make match to your backlog, we have to make it a price, right? So, um, see, here's an item and that price, and the related data price, we gave an item. I mean, we gave an amount and we selected our currency. Same thing, I was just doing match to the that you have shown that.
add on any other column also. Since that, you are adding the column field to name here, and then you are adding this particular uh, hash or whatever the symbol is. So you have, this this symbol is a match for each and every column after each and every column. Once you are done with all your columns, last column should be this. So your uh, your uh, template should look something like this in your first sheet. Then once you are done with this, you have to concatenate this file. For concatenation, I have already done it, and then there is a uh, formula here. So once you update this with any of your any of your uh, columns, automatically this this formula sheet will update updated. So you don't have to change this formula at all. Only change this template, whatever data you want to, automatically this will get changed. So it is already a contact with concatenated file. This include this covers most of them. CPT, CPMT ID. CPMT means this is a component. Component means an item. Component type is nothing but an item type. We have all item types under references here. Under references, we have item types, login and item types. What are other item types to online, gender, many other things are there, right? So we can create item types or we can use the standard item types which is available in the system. So if we want, this is the component. So here, in before even this item, this is the latest naming convention called item. Earlier in the initial time when the structure was launched, the name called item was named as the name component. That is why it is CPMT. But this the item in, uh, file, the template file which needs to be uploaded, this structure uh, structure they have not changed the piece. Please here only in the in the uh, random section only item is changed, but not in the uh structure box. That is why it is CPMT ID, CPMT size, division, date and time. So if you had opened the connector workbook, so all these things will be here. So after this and every field, you have to insert this uh, bar and then uh, concatenate your file. So instead of taking this file, you have to always copy this file and then put it in your notepad. So this will actually paste it in your notepad. It will look like this. Otherwise, it will directly your this sheet in the then it will become like this. So this particular notepad file, if you put it in your SSTP server and try to run item connector, it will come into error, but still will get uploaded in this. It will tell exceptions, thousand items you are uploading, all thousand items will be exception. So, the next time that makes your file, this is happening only with the item connector, as you see connector, user connector, and all you want to do it. Whatever is there in your Excel, that only you can put it on your file. So, this item connector, you should be there. I'll, I'll just ask you this. So, Madhvi, actually I am just looking out for any uh, consolidated document that you no know, pictures would be fine for the uh, you know, No, I don't have document. I have not prepared any new process in it. Whatever questions coming from there because I am not, I can't remember the exact description of the question that was there. That's the problem. Okay, but at least marking is there. When you ask about the task, so I know that there was a question which is there saying that if I have to create a task in the future, on the which task that is now I just created. So they ask that and then they want to say, uh, so, uh, I think that's the question which we have to do more. That way, I, I remember if I look at the system, at least some extent I will know what it is. 
So, do you think that the questions which are appearing in the certification will, will be uh, covered in the document which you have shared as we have shared a 15 on the document, right? Oh, the time to document Yes, the time to document. Oh, it's time to document. And the name is the question that I have shared. So, some of those previous and all I have shared, right? Other than just like to, um, what is the previous ad set? Is it right? Then we have a previous set I have shared. Navigate to your system, go to system admin configuration and go to your global variables, user settings and uh, registration settings and then uh, you see like under registration settings what is there, under confirmation notification settings what is there and under registration settings what is there. Similarly for user settings, we have said and listener. So, there is a question in present admin bank supervisors and create a user schedule content. They will give us a scenario and they will write this description. And we are asking where is this enabled? Whether it is under global variables or in external file or under registration settings or under user settings. So this is the principle account or that entity which is it is enabled under user settings. So, there is a question, user interface this way, whether this recommended is there or not, so we have to see the recommended and it is on the user interface. And coming to notification, I have these seven notifications if you will ask one and they will tell whether this is done under user settings or under registration settings or under social media. So you should know what notification is here and under under which settings you are going to do. It is so clear key, the only is now notification settings, it is under user settings and these are all the settings that you do. Simple as that. User, when, when it notifies user when an item is added, modified or removed, user is getting a notification. And similarly, when the uh, supervisor is getting a notification when user is completing an item, whether it is not completing an item, or whether it is 
a course has been assigned to one in uh, user, as well as the knowledge plan. Then also, um, uh, allow, it, allow user to modify knowledge plan education. So, if they will just ask one question, supervisor, uh, uh, supervisor will be notified when a uh, user successfully completes an item. Where is the second package? So, we can see on the user second. We will send a navigation, just an admin configuration user setting. So, we have to change that, that action. And stop changing any other registration settings as well as well. So, that is the reason which we have to change all these uh, sections one by one. So, under these service methods, the questions that we have asked for user settings are in the notification, this particular section, record learning. User can record learning, supervisor can record learning. Record, users can do record learning under this, uh, where are the enabling data. So, that is one more question. So, under this particular user setting, we will press two questions. So, similarly, under registration section, there is one question, under global data, there are two questions. So we actually shuffle them into small to the sequence a few which will come in one set of questions and other uh which is another person is taking after an app that uh some systems will not come. So on the registration settings, if you see here, there are so many checkbox which is enabled. So here, there is only one person from the registration settings. So let's call some global users. There is a question on this part. We have given four options. You have to select the design by the user time permission or selection permission for the user. Then we have questions in that there are the actually doing the delegation settings. We have the principal permission and selected permission and they have given two more permissions which we have to do this. They have not given very few principal permission and selected permission. They have given one which sentence of description by explaining around so we have to be careful in choosing this. We see all four of the questions. Let's see what is the answer. Let's see what is the answer. And after the tennis, they will do this thing. And they have given this thing. This thing. When they have asked about password setting, they have asked, they have given actions, multiple actions that I, this thing, and this thing. So when they do, see to the fact you need the question carefully and select only. Password setting related checkboxes and not log in log out setting checkboxes because both are under different settings. So to confuse, they have just given some this to carefully use. We can tell password settings under global variables we are doing question. So when they give these five options and they say three are correct or just two. I have been told in the video to complete the video with the login of the setting set. And then, question also to return the password setting, so we have to be careful. We might get confused because you know, login of the setting is just under total variables, we might need to process it. So, we have to check all these things. And they have said user accounts can be created, and uh, where are they created under total variables? There is a checkbox to enable it. And AICC bracket settings here. There is a description given here. And this description can be localized. We can set the languages. So if we navigate here, it clearly says open localization data. So they will give a navigation path saying system admin configuration global variables open localization data. So they will tell the AICC bracket setting where employee user can acknowledge the AICC bracket. So we have to always choose the, this particular uh, option that we have given and not any other. They will tell it is also available under the and this case it is also available under configuration or services. So 
Firstly, we have to see that navigation is under consideration of the activation of the variables and the localization backup that is related to AI duty and the checking of the system. Now, coming to this particular section, general setting, a few signatures. So, they have said, disabling electronic signatures will automatically authenticate all unverified learning students. This is a question, where are they doing it? So, it says these signatures. They will not give anything else, just they will do not online access these signatures and other four other options we have to use. Now coming to general settings. And then for the we have asked from here. It is only from the main setting. Global variable, main fast, execute. There is something called enable new calendar attachment. We will say we can enable the calendar attachment. Where are the enables? So we have to choose global variable and under main. There is a, 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 I mean there is a task given by them. System admin configuration global variables are main setting. For so the system admin global variables So we have to choose that option for selecting any other application pattern. So under global variables, the registration settings are in the settings. This is what are the questions that we have. So, under these settings, there is a topic called global variable. So, from that topic, each person, whatever they are teaching others, these are all the systems. So, Marjorie, uh, like how many sessions we are still left with? Maybe one more. So that means, uh, whatever content is available. What about the AI system, and all the uh, That wasn't discussed with me there, the AI system, and that was only discussed with me. Uh, can I start from the AI system, and all the AI system? Who's passing? Agent, do this scenario, do this. Ah, so that's completely, uh, like, an overview of the part. I'm trying, I'm trying to get that. Like you will be trying to get that. But I even asked from the client, I mean, not the client, my friend, who actually implemented for other projects, even those inside online. So I was just going to do it, and we had some such things, and we just wanted to do it, 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 and we just wanted to do it. We will do a secondary system, we will do it for our ourselves. We can still have this work out here. We will do it in five and we can have this work out here. We can still have this work out here. But we will actually get into the system itself. We will get into the online and in the online program. Search for your access and program packages. Which will we have done what we call the scenario, right? So, this is here. Here is the key. All these are here. This is the key. And then you just, I don't know anything, 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 I don't know anything
There is another PDF. Uh, that PDF gives us uh, the
Similarly, the way we have seen questions from global variables, 
section that way that way each person can learn a variable so similarly there will be learning needs management as well as the academy as well as the uh, concerning the question system as well as the system like that so need the configuration guide is really important 12 percent from study 12 percent from learning needs management is high and again 8 percent from or schedule testing what we have given schedule testing what we have given now we're going to do just some from there the classification that we have seen in the initial time so we can again ask what what uh, is the classification for them we can do this is what we call it We also take some questions about any scenario. So then, this is a schedule that I like. So then, I have to create a code or an item which is IMT as well as online. It falls under this classification. So then, the schedule can be online as well as blended. So we have to choose blended. That's a two for the system to get that. That is one system from there. Now, if you actually go in and search. And so in the beginning class, I have to do the both of them. Yes, I have item calculation and item ID. So that also is one of the best. Item ID, item type, and division data type. This is the component. The first chapter of the learning needs management item, item chapter, chapter chapter two. We will explain what an item type is and what is an item type. That is all about the system. From schedule testing, there is a question of how far we are. One day I had taken a class on class specifically on user needs management. So under user needs management, how are we in what all manner we are able to assign a code so that again they have to have two five five or four different scenarios and they have asked in what all ways we will be able to assign to two employees. So you have to be able to tell what four of them. This is learning needs management document previous to show the five different types of the learning needs management. So you should. Most of the different types of the people. If you just go to one topic, maybe one with the items, it has many things within it. You pick up on an item, immediately they say item two. And they say what exactly are those? All three, all three components: item, item type, division, and item ID is item two. So they will give an explanation. Now there is a lab also. What how you have to create an item, and then there is an exercise. After the exercise, whatever topic they are asking again. So then again, how the segment of creator has access to the past two items. So how to create a chapter and match the item, and to create a subject area and match the item. So this is the. We are asking for that, and if you are so, how is that the solution, and how is it hard to manage? So the entire topic is the same value. So it's creating, it's complete value of cycle, creating an item, creating the subject area, creating the catalog, matching it with the item, catalog, and everything. It covers the your model one of them. Your model two is the same curricula. So coming to curricula, how how curricula is being created. And how we are mapping this, how we are associating them with the item, what curricula is created, how the classes are created, and classes with which curricula, everything, another level. So coming to that, just our previous days, because there's just the three training calculations that we have seen, that calculation should be applicable. Now coming to manual learning assignment, user management, how uh, uh, how we are going to assign items to the user. So this particular chapter, and this. 
será que isso está sendo feito por Haddad? O órgão do Rio que está saindo de acordo. Se eu fiz uma outra alternativa, eu não quero que lá em Gafu, a sair no meu pai, com o trigo que eu fiz, com o meu pai, com o meu filho, recordando o dia de hoje, com o meu filho, 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 com And how it is uh, shown in learning history, and um, yeah, the certificate that will be able to see. The learning given to the test, which we have seen again now, this is. Coming to learning with chess, this is substitute and all objects, three different things to create that we create as a substitute and we have to do an item. So that is again another chapter, three different things that we have seen. The item division from the item tab, uh, where are we going to revise an item? The same screen. So, how the revision can happen, and this particular revision will also change the description. You can say revision version 1 or 2. It says clearly here revision 2. Once we do it under revision, or revising from the actions item. Otherwise, we are not supposed to revise an item on the same screen as we should. But the changes will not be made to an item and that will not be made to an item. Tell me the importance of the wrong property. Huh? Uh, can you just uh, one second revise on property as you have? Yeah. What? Yeah. Property. Uh, a kind of local property, sir. Yeah. So now we can use this, your assignment is to file it down. Once we make any sort of changes to our assignment profile, that is, we are setting a rule saying that a person who belongs to the central location and who is in the central department should be assigned 100 places. If they say, if we are considering our assignment profile that way, the moment we actually create our assignment profile or we make any sort of changes to our assignment profile under our action service or propagation pattern and also our status says that require propagation. Because we have not made any sort of changes to our rules here, it is because uh, it is grayed out. We will not be able to propagate it because it is already propagated. There is a catalog uh, for human resources. And we want to assign, if we go to manage rules, in the manage rules and the attributes, we will see like what rules have been selected here. They say a person who belongs to domain called admin or AS and employee who is matching. There is, there is, okay. there, there is they have created an employee type of matching six O D R power. So they want to create a rule, people who belong to these two attributes, they should be set a list of courses. And that is what is the problem that they will be able to do it. If that is the rule that we have seen, we create our rule and then we save our rule before that we can even see if we will use this another assignment to help go. So whatever rule we have created, we can even check how many rules are there under that assignment to help. So once we are done with that and we save our assignment profile, we have to propagate it. Once we propagate it, what happens is all the rules, whatever we have created, will go and trigger to so the users who belong to that particular department. As we have seen when we have shown the preview here, preview users and assignment profile, list of users will come and at the end it will also tell to see users. So what you can do is, you can, if you want to test that also, whether it is working fine or not, you can go to any user and go into the learning plan and check whether the code that you have chosen uh, is actually assigned to the learning plan. So now, unless or until you have not propagated, whatever catalog you have matched to your assignment profile, employees will not be able to, uh, will not be able to do anything. If they get into the catalog, the entire page will be blank. They will not be able to do anything to say. Because it is not perfect. Thank you. Yeah.